I wanted to make a video in response to the last video I made about, I think it was about carnivore. Actually, let me look at what the video was. Um, it's been a couple of days. So the video was five main downsides of low carb diets. Okay. That was, I, I got a lot of attacks. Imagine that from the keto carnivore crew. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. All of them claim how amazing results they got on keto and carnivore, right? None of them have channels. If you have gotten this many good results from keto and carnivore, make a channel, help other people and stop bragging about it in the comment section and go do something about it. I mean, that's, that's going to be the start of the video, but I did want to talk about uh, my kind of transition and everything like that. I have notes, which is unusual. I have been doing that, but I'm not here to like really, again, I've talked, talked about this in the past. I am not any kind of like animal saver. I don't have any vendetta against animals. This was never done for that reason whatsoever. This was purely because I was over 400 pounds. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about kind of my life on keto carnivore. I wanted to talk about my life on high carb, low fat. And I wanted to talk about like some tips on, on high carb, low fat. So I wanted to get started here. Keto, uh, I loved it at first. Uh, water retention was gone for the most part, but it did return. Okay, so that was actually kind of the reason that I started keto in the first place. It was back in 1999. I honestly don't even know if it was called keto at that time. It was kind of a variation of Atkins. And I'm like, I am always retaining water. I would notice, especially after I ate like chicken and a few other things that I would retain water really bad and I couldn't figure it out. I kind of looked into it. The internet, you know, wasn't I couldn't find much in that in that day. I did go to the library and I did look up some, you know, studies and, and different things, but I really was not finding why I was retaining water so bad at all. So that's why I went on keto. All right. Now there was an immediate energy on keto. I have to say that, but I found out later that it's from raised cortisol because you're looking for carbohydrates. And that is what causes some of the issues that come in later on that I found. Okay. So this is me. I think that there's one species, species specific diet, just because we all have the same mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines, uh, you know, digestive system. We all have the same thing. Now is that high carb, low fat? If you look in nature, most things are high carb, low fat. You get a lot of people who are coming into the comment section and saying, well, we ate meat, blah, 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 so much. It's it's just not true. Like if you look at even like Gobekli Tepe, which is the oldest dig site that's ever been found, I believe it's in Turkey, majority of the foodstuffs that they found, whether it was in the bowls that they were using or in the human remains that they found was starches. It just is what it is. And, and again... I loved eating meat. I it was it was I loved grilling. I I loved doing all that kind of stuff. This was definitely not, you know, I the, the animal aspect of it never came to play. I cut fish for a living for 7 years. Like it, it it never came into play. Okay, so that wasn't the reason for me doing this. Fast weight loss in the beginning. Okay, so there was a lot I didn't even actually have that much weight to lose in the beginning. I had a perceived amount of weight to lose in the beginning. And I had a lot of water retention. And I've talked about this in a previous video, how my weight could fluctuate like 20 to 25 pounds in a day. I don't know how it's possible. I would bring it up to doctors. They didn't believe me. I would bring in pictures of this happening because I worked at a place that had a walk-on scale and I would take pictures with the newspaper and stuff and I would bring it into them, but I would have 20 to 25 pound weight difference some days. And I'm like, I, I, I could never still to this day when I did that drive fast, I lost 13 pounds in two days. This has actually been the search of mine to figure out how to get my body to stop retaining so much water. I did manage that in 2016, but that was with so much bike riding. And ever since my ankle, I had to have my ankle replaced. I just can't ride like I used to. Okay. And then I just wrote, then it started going downhill. Now I had great results from 99 into 2001. Everything started. I mean, it was somewhat gradual. But it started falling apart in 2001, but I didn't want to hear it. I started going to the doctors. I'm like, I can't sleep. 
I have no energy. My testosterone was tanked. They actually at one point told pulled 24 vials or 22 or something like that vials of blood from me i'm like i'm looking at this thing and you know how they get the little thing coming out there popping another one off and popping up i'm like am i gonna have anything left it was ridiculous they couldn't find really a whole lot other than my endocrine system was gone and i found out not that long ago actually the carbohydrates is what runs the endocrine system everybody thinks it's cholesterol and oil and all that kind of stuff. It's not. It's just not at all. Pritikin can prove this. I've done videos about that. I've done videos about him proving the fact that every time you eat mat, uh, meat and fat, you have minor uh, you know, infarctions in, in your uh, heart. It's just not good. So yes, while there was some ancestors that we have that ate a lot of meat, they didn't have a very high life expectancy. And they also, uh, you know, tout about these Eskimos about how they don't have any issues whatsoever. But why do they have the, the like? I think men are uh, expectancy of sixty three and women are sixty five. That's like the lowest of any group on this planet. So it's it's. I mean, if that's what you want to shoot for, because this place is a hellhole. Go for it. You know, the reptiles are after us and everything like that. So, you know, maybe you just don't want to be here. And that's why you're touting this keto carnivore. And I'm seeing the result of this stuff with my father and my mother because they really eat this way. And I'm seeing some of the stuff that they've got going on right now. Anyway. Uh, okay. So in 2003, while I was still on the keto, while I was still defending it to, the, to my doctor, I came across, I knew who he was, but I came across this book by Mike Menzer. And Mike Menzer was a, a huge influencer back in the day before, you know, social media and all that. But he was in all the magazines, all the bodybuilding magazines. He wrote a lot of books. He did a lot of lectures. And he was talking about the fact that you need at least 65 to 75% of your diet to come from carbohydrates. This dude was built this dude was jacked. And you can't use the uh, claim of, well, he was on Adranges, you know, uh, you know, every single one of these bodybuilders is on the exact same stuff. Again, I, I say to you, if you've made it this far, you're somebody who loves keto carnivore, you've had these great results. Everybody's done it for seven years too. It's weird. They, they all say the same things, like bots. But if you're not a bot and you're on my comment section, Make videos. You've got fantastic results. Make a channel. It'd blow up, right? This this topic is huge these days, right? You would have one of the biggest channels according to your results. Go for it. All right, so on the high carb, low fat thing. My sleep, I don't wanna I don't wanna go into huge amounts of either one of these because I don't want this video. How long is this video so far? Where's the time? already 10 minutes. I don't want this to be like a 30, 40, 50 minute video, but I did start running into a lot of negative results on keto. Uh, so I probably should outline some of those. So yes, I did make it actually kind of like that five to six, seven year mark. And I, I was fine. My weight loss did stopped at like 225. I never could go get below that. Maybe 215. Never could get go, uh, below that. The water, water retention came back, started losing my hair, couldn't sleep, smelling like ammonia, throwing up stomach acid. And somebody comment, uh, commented, commented on my video the other day that I uh, said that I was eating upwards of 40 pounds of beef, chicken, poultry, eggs, dairy a week, right? It didn't start off like that. But I was not going to the bathroom, number two, at all. So, but I'd still be hungry. I still have that distended gut. You see a lot of times in bodybuilders. It was it was really bad, right? My my liver started going downhill. My kidneys started going downhill, and I ran into this guy at at uh, Lansdale um, Lansdale, Pennsylvania, and he's like he was touting you know raw vegan. He's like you're really fat, and I said I really know that, and he's like I can help you, and I'm like all right, you know I've tried everything else. Let's 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 give this a shot. So we did give it a shot. And I went raw vegan overnight and it did help a lot. And I started thinking about that Mike Menzer guy and he talking about how you really need carbohydrates more than anything else because your body runs off of it. And that turned into a rabbit hole of me discovering that this is actually true. Uh, in my nutrition, I, I actually got certified in nutrition in 2007, eight, somewhere in there. 
And it was even talking about how much carbohydrates you needed. I didn't want to listen to it because I was on this keto carnivore thing. I'm like, no, this is going to work one day because I'm retarded sometimes. And I never really did. It worked for a certain amount of time, but I got all the bad results. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, channels out there who built their entire channel off keto and carnivore, and they're coming off this stuff nowadays because it only lasts for a certain amount of time. And then the real negative health effects start coming in. It really just, if you read the medical medium, it kind of just depends on how bad your liver is or how good your liver is when you get started. All right, so I want to talk about high carb, low fat, Slept like a baby uh, after the initial refeed, after I really started getting carbohydrates into the system. That was a nice change because I wasn't sleeping hardly at all when I was doing a lot of meat. It, it, was, it was bad. I mean, there was one time I didn't sleep for two straight weeks. Like I might have slept like for a half hour here and there, but as far as going to bed and just actually sleeping, there was one time that it lasted for two weeks that I didn't do this. Uh, much improved bowels. Like I said, I was not going number two hardly at all. Maybe once a week. It was really getting bad. And that was why I was eating so much towards the end because I wasn't absorbing anything, but the body was hungry at the same time. So it was like this huge thing. And this is why I was talking about the distended gut. I've lost 175 pounds on this thing, right? This high carb, low fat. And I gained more than 175 pounds in the end on keto carnivore. All right, improved bowels. I uh, had more energy after the initial refeed. When you first come into high carb, low fat, you are probably not going to have the most amount of energy. And this is why a lot of people get off of it really quick because you're coming off this high meat with the high cortisol and the adrenal you know, stuff going on. And a lot of people, a lot of those people are on a lot of coffee. I mean, if you really, one of the biggest things that you see in the keto carnivore uh, crew is they all love their coffee. They drink a lot of it. Some of them start their day off with coffee and have nothing else. And they draw, they fast until they eat it. It's, it, you know, and they they might be slender and skinny, but they, they don't look healthy at all. And they've got these huge bags under their eyes and it, it's just, it's a hot mess. So really watch out for that. In the beginning, you probably are going to have worse energy just because your body's not used to processing this many carbs. So it can take a little while before you start having energy, but once you do, it's there. Uh, all right. And then weight came off quickly in the beginning. There was, when I was raw vegan, there was times where there was days where I would lose two pounds in a day and it started freaking me out. So I started adding avocado in there just to kind of curtail some of the weight loss because it was really bad. Now, I didn't come back into it with starches. Once I added starches back into the diet, though, I have to say that I started gaining weight again. And I don't know what that is. I'm still trying to figure out that mechanism because when I, when I was fully raw, like I could not keep the weight on at all. But I hate it. Like, I hate that diet. I hate that diet. I almost rather just have the weight on me than be fully raw. I just can't stand it. I actually don't even have any fruit in this house at all right now. I just ate my last watermelon. I'm contemplating like just going full st st straight on starch because since I've added the fruit back in, if you watch my journey, I lost a little over 30 pounds in three months earlier in this year, so of April was it April, uh, May, and June? I lost 30 pounds, and it has gone up again since I added the fruit back in. So I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. I. It seems like when I am straight fruit and like vegetable, not cooked, I'm fine. When I'm straight starch, because I lost I lost a decent amount of weight in 2020 on just starch, but I was recovering from having my ankle replaced, so that might be part of it. But I was eating a lot, a lot. After that ankle replacement, I was ridiculously hungry. Um, but I lost 15 to 20 pounds in, in the first like month, month and a half of doing that. And that's even with all the inflammation that I had from the surgery. I'm trying to figure this out. It, it's still driving me nuts. As you can see, I'm still not 100% there. I notice things in the way. I'm not 100% there. And that's why I do struggle sometimes to make these videos because I'm like, I'm not 100% where I want to be, but I know that I'm better off than I was when I was doing carnivore, keto carnivore, right? I know that I am. I, I, my, I was terrible. I, I, I could not believe that I got over 400 pounds <laughs> doing this. And it was largely because I wasn't digesting anything at this point. Everything was coming out. And when I finally did go number two, you almost had to clear the house. It was, I, I'm like, 
I had to like almost have something over my nose. It was nuts. And a lot of these keto carnivore people are uh, bragging about not going to the bathroom all that often. That is not a good thing at all. You don't want that. I don't know why anybody would claim that they wanted that. It's not a good thing. Dennis Burkett, which I'm, it's got to be one of my videos because I really want to talk about this. He talked about when he went to Africa, he, he did not find a lot of disease. He hardly found any disease. And he discovered that these people ate like 300 grams of fiber a day. And he found that nothing could stay in the bowels long enough to actually cause any of these diseases that we have nowadays. But if it's getting stuck in there, and if you go get a colonoscopy, it's not going to show that you've got anything in there because it's stuck in the small intestines. The colonoscopy does not go into the small intestines. Anyway, the negatives of high carb, low fat. Again, you're going to retain water really bad when you first get on it. You're not going to have that much energy while you're uh, getting uh, used to having your insulin rebalance. You are. It's a pain in the ass, really. I mean, if you're going, if you're going to go straight vegan or plant based, it's kind of a pain in the ass because you go to people's houses, they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to. They don't want to cook anything different for you. So most of the time, you're going to have to cook your own stuff, which is fine. You know, whatever. It can be. Um, alienating a little bit uh, unless you can find a crew. The only problem with me is that crew is a bit strange and I don't get along with them all that well. Um, so yeah, it can be a bit alienating in the beginning or even still 14 years later. So there is that part. But I mean, I kind of always had that. So I, maybe it's just me. Uh, tips for beginners. Start with just one meal and go from there. Like I went straight cold turkey just because I was really in bad shape. I went straight, straight up. I just, and here's the thing. I was not high carb, low fat. I really was not when I went because I was losing weight just way too fast, way too fast. The uh, Dan McDonald at that time was, was promoting like his most successful course, which was lose the pound in a, a day, the raw way. I think it was what it was called. I was losing more than that. And I didn't want to lose more than that. So I did start adding in a lot of nuts, a lot of seeds, a lot of avocados to get it to like one pound a day. And I, and it, it was successful, <clears throat> but had I to do it again, I would still do a cold Turkey, but most people can't do that. So I would start, I would start off, uh, with one meal a day. You're going to start, uh, oh, I already talked about this. You're, you're going to start having weight, water weight, most likely because carbohydrates, attached what you know carbohydrate attaches to three water and that is going to be in your system and that's usually stored in the muscles but it's going to be a spillover because your body's like man i haven't had this in a really long time let's save as much of this as we can you're going to have to to uh be ready for that maybe even read a, di a book like um the mucusless diet by arnold Errett. he explains a lot a lot of what you're going to be going through which is is it can be a lot uh, keep keep staples on hand. Like I keep, I don't know, like 20 pounds of potatoes on hand and I've probably got 200 pounds of rice in the house just so you always have something. And here's the thing. See if fruit or starch works better for you. You'll know. You'll have way more energy on one opposed to the other. Maybe you'll have energy on both and you'll be fine. I don't know. You know, it, it, I feel like that is where insulin issues come into hand. If you have huge is insulin issues, fruit only is going to help that because there's very little glucose in fruit and that's what you need. Uh, insulin is needed to break down glucose, but it's not needed for fructose or sucrose. So really see which one works better for you. Uh, fruit definitely worked better for me in the beginning, but unfortunately it really appears that I have to have either one or the other. It just doesn't seem that I can do both fruit and starch. I don't get it. it drives me nuts. Think that's about it. Again, again, if you are one of these, if you made it this far, we're 21 minutes into this. If you made it this far, and you got fantastic results that you're claiming, make videos, make videos about it. Help other people get these results that you claim that you have. Because not a single one of these people who claim that they got these results even has a picture of them on their little profile thing. If I got these fantastic results, I know I'd be posting my picture everywhere. I post this picture everywhere and I've gotten 175 pound loss results 
But I haven't, you know, these crazy results that you guys claim that you're getting, I mean, who wouldn't want to see that, right? Everybody's, and it's crazy because all, all of you guys have had fantastic results for seven years. Certain, uh, certain keywords, everybody's had it. It's almost like bots. Another thing that I've been seeing a lot lately is hate on sugar. I have my opinions about this. And my opinions, because somebody actually come in, uh, or, or responded back to me in a DM. She went back on keto last year, and she's like, you're right, it really doesn't work that well. But I can't do X and X and X, the durian rider says. I think our food is so poisoned in this country that there's certain things that he can do and other countries can do that we just cannot. We just have so much stuff all over our food. If you look at the ingredient list, even on ketchup, I think there's five five ingredients in, in Heinz ketchup in Europe. There's like 25 ingredients in ketchup in the country it's made in, in America. This has to be causing issues. In, in some capacity. And that might actually be why some of these people on the keto carnivore are having such good results. I don't know. I don't know. But um, that is the video. I don't want to talk anymore. 24 minutes is probably enough. If you want me to talk more in detail about a certain item in this video, comment that down below. And I will make a video about it if I get enough results for each one. Anyway, that's the video. Comments, questions down below. Most of the comments are going to come from the Keto Carnivore crew. But don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid to post your results if you've had good results on high carb, low fat. I will talk to you in the next one. Like, subscribe. Peace.